Hello y'all, this is Kaiserreich, a mod for Hearts of Iron 4, where Germany won World War I. We're going to play as the Emirate of Serenaka, located in modern-day Libya. Serenaka has been dealing with European colonial ambitions for a couple decades, having pushed back the Italians after a guerrilla war, but the Emirate now has to worry about the ever-hungry nearby French Republic. The country begins as an Ottoman Emirate, a form of puppet to the Empire, and we have three national spirits, home of the Sanasi Order, Ottoman naval dominance, and Sanasi volunteers. The only significant military tech we have at the very start is basic weapons which is better than nothing in the decisions tab we can see a couple important things like the masters of saharan trade which is something to keep track of because it represents trade routes that will benefit us and the struggle against imperialism which is focused around expanding the sanazi a sufi order that is fighting against the european colonial expansion in the region our army starts with three divisions one includes camels and for commanders we have two very good generals one okay one and a field marshal. Looking into the focus tree instead of doing a military focus, let's start with the civilian ones dedicated to improving the economy and industry because they will benefit us more currently. A lore event, the Sanasi Order has been a major player in Cyrenaica since the 19th century. The Emirate fought alongside the Ottomans in 1911, even after Libya was handed over to the Italians. While World War I ended with an Ottoman victory, the empire is overstretched and bankrupt and is slowly losing their grasp on the area. The supreme leader of the Sanasi Order died in 1933, leaving his son to take charge. However, some within the Order look to the rightful heir Idris, who is in exile. The Ottoman Empire starts controlling Benghazi and Tripoli. We will need those later to form Libya. One of our caravans were plundered along the Saharan trade routes, which is a shame. The Fifth Anglo-Afghani War, high hopes for Afghanistan there. We celebrate the anniversary of the Treaty of Rome, where the Germans and the Austrians brought our colonial oppressor, Italy, down to its knees. As soon as I saw this focus, the Sawaila education program, I went straight for it because we start with just one research slot and we need another one. We're expanding our Salaya network in Timbuktu, which acts as sort of like a lodge, and that will give us more resistance against the French there, and it will decrease compliance for them just to irritate them even more. Caused by the market crash in the German Empire, the Ottoman economic recession has appeared, and that will cost us something in the form of loss-based stability. Spreading the teachings of the Sanazi, let's expand our network into what? Local authorities raise taxes, the merchants aren't happy, let's make up for the authorities, quote, losses, and lose 10 political power. The reason why we gotta help the caravans whenever we can is because they provide us with weapons and if you notice we do not have any military factories as of this moment and we will continue gaining weapons from the caravans as long as we can keep them operational. French attack Suwaya. The Suwaya is destroyed and a trade route is blocked off which is bad for us. Two major tribes in Serenaka are at odds with one another. We'll help the al Barazil over the al -Ajir as we will gain base stability but lose manpower which is a temporary setback. Besides expanding Suwailas, we can also build trade outposts which will help the caravans go faster and get us more guns at a quicker pace. Jabal Shamar declared war on Najan Hassa starting the unification war for Arabia. We can't really rely on Benghazi so we'll expand the Derna harbor getting rid of Ottoman naval dominance. Jabal Shamar lost in the Arabian Peninsula and the Sultanate of Naj emerges. Big news for us that could affect our country maybe there's a coup d'etat in Algiers and in the Ottoman Empire Mustafa Kemal seizes power. The empire that honestly includes us celebrates the festival of the breaking of the fast marking the end of Ramadan. We improve upon on our trade network by building up the oasis of Bilma cause that's just how caravan manager 1936 works. Moving from there we build up a trade outpost in the former capital of the Wadai Sultanate which is located in modern day historical timeline Chad. It's a good day for the Emirate of Serenaka. We have become the masters of the arms trade. We have finished with all the economic focuses so let's move to the military part of the tree and there's some pretty good national spirits here once we are done with those focuses and have completed them. Border friction in Western Egypt, we don't want to lose anything, so let's compensate the Jawazi even though we will lose 100 political power taking that route. A whole caravan is lost in the dunes of the Sahara. Merchants are worried and come to us for aid. We shall burden the cost. A caravan encounters a lone Bedouin boy. He accompanies them for a while before disappearing from it and is found dead a few hours later from snake bites. With a level 2 upgraded Sawaya and enough infantry equipment, we can begin army resistance cells to fight against the French Republic. With enough guns and manpower, we can reopen blockaded trading posts. Serbia, Romania, and Greece form the Belgrade Pact and they are seeking to challenge Bulgarian dominance. 
Despite their best attempts to fight it and outlaw it, slavery on the Central African route still takes place as the Ottoman government is unable to stop it. The Austrian Empire declared war on Hungary, I wonder what the reason for that is. In the news, Dutch elections happened, Senegalist revolutionaries in Switzerland, and the reason why the Hungarians are fighting Austrians. Basically, Austria wanted more autonomy for minorities in Hungary, which would lead to dismantlement of their state and privileges, so now we have war. Conflict to our south, Middle Africa declared war on Portugal for whatever reason. The Great Summit of Saranakan Tribes takes place, we lose some stability, but paternal autocracy gets more popular. Middle Africa fell apart so now we have all these wars and countries appearing left, right, and center and it's just going crazy down there. And there's a revolt in the Arabian Peninsula. There's the event explaining the collapse of Middle Africa and the German administration there is just gone. We were finding the oasis of Merzuk and I was not prepared for a Skyrim reference. Our country leader was incapacitated. We will lose him as a field marshal and the Sanusi Regency Council will take his place as leader. And meanwhile, while that is going on, a Austro-Hungarian army veteran is looking for the mythical town of Zozora in the desert. Checking in on all the conflicts going on in Europe right now, we have the Spanish Civil War, Hungary's war with Austria is ongoing, and the Belgrade Pact fights Bulgaria. This is the Sanusi Regency Council. They will be in charge unless a new leader comes into power or the old one recovers from being incapacitated. The French Republic is fighting Niger. That showed up, I think, because the resistance got to 100 and now they're doing own country. More trouble for the French, another rebellion has appeared in the form of Mali. With all that chaos going on, hopefully they won't notice our trade and caravans will continue to arrive with more weapons. The exiled heir, Idris, is gaining support in Egypt. The third and perhaps final rebellion appears in French Republic territory in the form of Wadai. There is one more that could possibly appear. Algeria is getting pretty high, but I'm not certain about that one. Protests escalate in Jerusalem, initially a peaceful protest by the expansion of the Jewish Immigration Office. It became violent when gendarmerie forces cracked down on protest leaders. More fighting in the Arabian Peninsula, this time it is the saudi Almani War. Desert glass exports increase due to interest from upper-class European society. The Libyan desert is one of the exclusive places this almost extraterrestrial material can be found. The Bulgarian government is overthrown not too long after they suffered their humiliating defeat against the Belgian grade pact. Some semi-local news, failed coup d'etat in Cairo. And the other news is over in Jerusalem, they have stopped Jewish immigration. General strike in Palestine, they demand prohibition of all Jewish immigration, prohibition of transfer of territory from Arab to Jews, and immediate withdrawal of the international gendarmerie. France closes down operations in Timbuktu. We'll be back there eventually. Pan-Arabism is on the rise in Saranaka. Across the Mediterranean, the Socialist Republic of Italy is fighting the two Sicilies. Whoever wins this war will control a good portion of the peninsula. Lots of war declarations. Italy declares war on the Austrian Empire and Serbia declares war on Illyria and the Fifth Balkan War begins. Hungary is still alive throughout all of this and there's another coup in Bulgaria. Scheming in Benghazi, Idris plans on making his big return but first some big opposition to him has to die. I think that guy is a general for us but if the plot succeeds he will be poisoned to death and we will have that happen. The poisoning takes place and Al-Mukhtar is dead. He was one of the most prominent defenders of the incapacitated leader, so Idris will return. It is done. The invitation is sent to Idris, who is more than happy to return, and he will come and be the supreme leader, also becoming a field marshal. Zeraneka leaves the Ottoman Empire and joins the Egyptian faction, the Cairo Pact, and that will also complete the focus that will start Idris's political path in the Emirate. Who was Idris the first? Historically, he was born into the Sanazi order. He became head of it in 1913 when his cousin abdicated. The exile did take place as well, which was meant to avoid militarily clashing with Benito Mussolini. This lasted until 1951 when the UN declared him King of Libya. His reign would see close links with Western powers and a growing oil industry in the nation. This would last until 1969 when he was cooed by a group of army officers led by Gaddafi. The explorers failed to find the mythical city so now they're just going to wander around the Libyan desert and the monarchy is restored in Greece. The focuses on this political path are a lot more centered around being on Egypt's side and the Cairo Pact in general instead of the alternative 
where you could work with the Caliph or fight him. An independent Kurdish state is declared. I'm sure that's going to go over with the Ottomans and they're already at war with Kurdistan. With the violence escalating in the Palestine area, the Congress of Haifa opens its doors to discuss the future of the Mutasar fate of Jerusalem. The Sultanate of Egypt is aiding Kurdistan and wants our help. This will be our best bet to unify Libya, so we'll join in. Iran joins in and declares war on the Ottoman Empire, and they have a little special event for that in the world news. And Kurdistan is no more, sadly, the nation we joined this war for. And the Sultanate of Naj joins the Cairo Pact, and they will soon be involved in the fighting as well. Things get even worse for the Ottoman Empire since there's a rebellion in Yemen. The Great Syrian Revolt, they leave the Ottoman Empire and break away, and now they're helping the Cairo Pact, and the Ottoman Empire calls in the Philaet of Armenia. Only a few days later, the Armenian Uprising occurs, and they're fighting against the Ottoman Empire, but on the bright side for them, they're not completely alone, because Azerbaijan, joins the Istanbul Pact. It is ridiculous how many revolts and rebellions are happening within the Ottoman Empire and in other news and Winston Churchill publishes an alternative history book named Our Finest Hour, where at the very least Germany lost World War I and the Gallipoli campaign was an Entente victory. Saranakin camels charge Constantinople. The Great Middle Eastern War is over and the Cairo Pact is victorious alongside its allies and we will unify Libya by bringing together Saranaka, Tripitania, and Fezzan. The unification of Libya focus is completed and we can see that we got a new flag. We could take the less federal route and go with the Libyan Federation, but instead let's go with the unitary state of Libya. Formation of political parties. We will have those now and it's a little ominous that it says the daggers have been drawn. Checking in on the rest of the world, the American Civil War continues. The Second Weltkrieg has begun and Italy is still fighting amongst itself, well at least two Sicilies in the Socialist Republic of Italy and the Austrian Empire is very large, having taken over nearly all the Balkans. While the world burns, Libya is going to sit back and watch. I'm going to end the video here. Make sure to check out the mod in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see y'all later.